Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. And guess what, Alan? Yes. It's been, and, and shockingly, it's been almost a year. Oh, my God. A year since we spoke to Michael Sweet, who's on the line with us. Michael? That's crazy because it feels to me, because we speak so often, it feels to me like maybe it's been a few months, not a year. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah well, things have been crazy the last couple of months. So, That's uh, true. Well, Very we'll true. Yeah, life, oddly enough, in this pandemic with COVID, um, it, you'd think that life would crawl at a snail's pace, but it, it actually feels to me as though it's sped up. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a year has gone. I don't know where the last six months went. I really don't. No, it's true. I have to say, I can't believe we're Labor Day weekend. So, but in saying that, today, September 4th, the launch of the new Striper album, Even the Devil Believes. And we were lucky enough to have you with us here today to talk about it. Yeah, we're we're really excited. You guys know me. I get excited about every release. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes I get. Uh, jabbed a little bit for uh, being that way and people get on me and say oh man you say that about every album that it's your best but I really 100% believe and feel uh, in my bones that this is our best album and, and, and there's so many reasons it's not just because of the music or the production but because of the uh what we were working with, the times we were recording it in, you know, and uh, yeah. it's our first album with our, our new bass player. Uh, you know, everybody knows Oz has some health issues and, you know, uh, we were all able to overcome that and, and do another album. Together. There's just so many reasons why I feel that it really is our best. And, and then when I listen to it as a whole, and the way it flows and everything, I think it's got all the perfect qualities for what everyone expects. You know, one person wants more 80s, they get it with invitation only. You know, one person wants more heavy, they get it with, uh, you know, uh, blood from above. One person wants mid-tempo, they get it with do unto others. They want a ballad, they get it with this I pray. I mean, they we kind of just put everything in there. To, to please everyone, and you never please everyone, but I think with this album, it's going to come the closest. Well, I, I can add to that. I got one word for this album, and it's a home run. Uh, the sounds It sounds current, but it also keeps the classic sound, like you said. Much more variation on this album than the pr pr preceding ones, and uh, it's a pleasant change. Uh, I agree song, with everything Alan, you just Alan, said. Which, which song yep. was it, or Mike, which song was it that you've taken from the the late 80s. Is, is there one reworking of a song there? There is. What it was, uh, it was a song that I wrote in 1989, and we actually recorded it for the Against the Law album. And I couldn't finish the lyrics to save my life. I, I, I was in a, a, you know, writer's block moment during that time, and I just couldn't finish it. So we literally scratched the song, and it didn't get included on Against the Law, obviously. So I decided to pull it off the shelf and uh, write the lyrics and change, make some changes, and it's the song Invitation Only. Oh, really? Okay. My money was on Forgotten Rock and Roll and Let Him In because it really has that L.A. strip feel. Kind of sounds like Keel, 80s Kiss, uh, anthemic. You know, it's it's got that kind of uh, guitar work that was very prevalent. So, so Yeah, totally. And, and those are songs that could have, you know, fit right in on some of our uh, records of, in the past, classic albums. But Invitation Only was was the song, and it, it's got a little bit more of a, a I don't want to say pop, but a little more commercial sound to it. It's not really a metal track. Uh, you, you know, uh, it, it was really Panama feeling and sounding. Uh, it used to start with the da 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 and the, and the tom, so it had a real Panama feel to it. We obviously changed the intro because we wanted to kind of steer away from that a little bit more. But that's the one, man. That's right out of the 80, uh, out of '88. I would have guessed that one. It sounds like '89. Excuse a, a me. Sunset Strip, as Alan said to me the other day, a Sunset Strip vibe. Yeah, totally. And yeah. it's 
funny and, because you know there's going to be someone that comes uh, puts a comment online that says, "Man, uh, you know, I wish I listened to the whole album. I just wish you guys would do something that has more of an '80s feel to it." <laughs> Here you go. And I'll be able to say, "Well, you can't get any more '80s than that song." Yeah. And <laughs> heavily it was literally bass written in the '80s. That track is heavily bass driven, and uh, and that's really prevalent the bass sound on that song. So, uh, uh, again, Perry, how did Perry influence a lot of the recording and the and the playing? Well, you know, Perry, the songs were all kind of laid out as they always are, and the guys came out here, and I showed them the songs, and uh, and we rehearsed them here at the house for a few weeks, and then went and recorded them, and. And the way it works, because I'm producing every album, I'm kind of sitting there with everyone as they're doing their part. So when Rob's tracking his drums, I'm sitting there, you know, hitting the uh, talk back, saying, hey, Rob, dude, you know, try this and, you know, maybe not so much of that right there and just watch your pushes and your pulls and do a choke right there. You know, I'm kind of guiding all of them through the process. Uh, they're doing their own thing, of course, but I'm kind of guiding them through it. So I did the same thing with Perry. I just kind of sat there and uh, guided him through the bass parts. But Perry, the thing about Perry that's really cool is all of his, uh, the way he plays bass and the way it feels uh, is really right in the pocket. And it's a very uh, driving kind of solid foundation. He doesn't do a lot of uh, all over the neck. and He's not always playing busy parts. He's just playing solid parts. And that's the thing I noticed right off the bat. This record is really solid in the groove. Yep, yep, that's, I, I, I agree. That's the one thing I picked up as well. So, so I want to get into a few of the tracks and we can discuss a few of the tracks and our feelings and you can elaborate upon them. Sure, man, absolutely. All right. Jim, my blood from above. There's oh, the, yes. what we I'm, call. You know, I mean, that's the, what we call our Halford song. That's where Michael <laughs> gets that scream in. It's one every album, and for me, that's the the Halford the scream cut off of this one. And what a great track to start the album with. But I kind of like the harmony uh, yeah, we, screams we, at the end. I like the harmony screams at the end. That's my input. Oh, good man. Yeah, the, the uh, we thought it was the perfect song to start the album with. You know, you got to really you got to come out swinging, right? And <laughs> And we did, and that's why we started it with that song. Um, we certainly could have started with Middle Finger Messiah as well, but you know, everyone just kind of felt that uh, Blood from Above was stronger, you know. So uh, we we went with that, and in the end, Harmony Scream, that's where the song kind of takes a little bit of a twist in more of a modern direction, you know, uh, for us anyway. It's got the breakdown, the halftime kind of groove, and uh, gets chunkier, and then it's got the harmony scream. And some people have even said that they heard a little uh, a bit of um, um, Pantera in, in the end breakdown. I thought, oh, that's interesting. But, uh, yeah, man, a really cool song. We we wanted to come out swinging, and that's why we chose that one. Okay, here, here here's my next one here. Make America Great Again. Wait a second. No, no. Make Love Great Again. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. And that's the big, I'm sure, you know, that was done just to stir things up a little bit. Right, Mike? Well, I'll be honest with you. Not really. Okay. And, and when I say that, I think I let people down sometimes because I think they expect me to say, yeah, that's that's a pro-Trump song. And it's really not. Uh, Perry threw uh, the title out, uh, Make Rock Great Again. And I thought, oh, that's cool, man. I like that. But, you know, rock is a little cliche. And then my brother said, hey, man, what about make God great again? And I said, you can't make God any greater than he already <laughs> is. So I said, what about make love great again? And everyone liked that. And I think it's so relevant to our times right now because love, we really need more love in this in this world, man. Um and I don't know about how it's going in Canada, but especially here in the U.S., it's just crazy yeah, right it now. It seems like the lines are drawn and there's no more communication. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, insane, man. So, you know, as corny as people might think it is, it's true. Love is the answer. Yeah. And it again, just, another another track with a very, very prevalent bass sound on there. Yeah, yeah. mid-tempo got a little heaven and hell vibe to it but you, you guys know we're we're big sabbath and deal fans you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let him in 
Let him in. That's uh, for me. That takes you right back to the LA Strip. That's one of those songs that uh, takes you right back to that uh, time and place. So, yeah, that was written uh, when I was one year old in 1964. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that on is crayons. <laughs> that's got, in my opinion, that that's a song that could have fit right in on Soldiers Under Command. Mm. You know, it's got that, uh, there's something about it that just kind of gives me a soldier's feel. Uh, And it is a throwback. It's got that classic striper sound to it. And and the lyrics as well, you know, the message, the the music. Um, And it's definitely a really cool song. We didn't go with that as a single because we just felt like Blood From Above was stronger and would make a, a, a bigger statement. We felt that make love great again would make a, a really cool statement and then now we just released today do unto others uh and man we're so happy with how that one turned out because it's it's got this uh almost like it's got a a powerful uh riff kind of a dio vibe to it but yet it's almost kind of melancholy and sad when it gets to the chorus uh the melody and then if you watch the video it's just all about helping one another and you know treating other people as you would expect to be treated yeah one of my standouts on the album for sure do unto others great double leads they got that class, classic striper double leads in the in the soloing and uh, great lyrics and uh, it kind of a bad company feel to kind of a country a country ish almost feel to it so yeah it's kind That's of a little a little different feel for us for for sure uh, and you know we just love trying different things and you know i love how the the, the verses are just heavy and, and like i said it, it for some reason reminds me of dio a little bit and then when it gets to the chorus it kind of becomes almost angelic and goes somewhere totally different yeah yeah, yeah. i got confused with this i pray so yeah. that's one that i thought was a great standout too great change of pace too uh, on the album like you said the flow of the album you're, you're plugging away and then you hit the this i pray and say whoa what's this where did this come from all of a sudden too <laughs> Yeah, with this I pray, I mean, I think everyone expects Striper to always do a ballad. And for the most part, we do uh, on every album. This song was a song that a friend of mine sent to me. It was basically just the the verses, okay? So it didn't have the chorus. So imagine the, the verse being a chorus as well. And that's how he sent it to me. And he asked me to come and record and sing that song with him on his album. And I said to him, man, I really like this song. This could be a cool Striper song. What about Striper recording? And he got real excited. His name's Livio Gravini, a local legend here in Massachusetts. There you go. And I took the song um, and I wrote the chorus, the melody and the, and the chorus. And then I added a couple of verses and then I arranged it and, and took it a little bit more in almost the Bon Jovi. It's got a little Skinnerd thing to it. But uh, when it gets to the chorus, it's a little bit more uh, Blaze of Glory, Bon Jovi kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Then, you know, we thought it'd be really cool and very different for Striper to do a song like that. It works. It works. It's really, uh, you know, like you said, I'm listening to the album and that one pops up. Oh, wow. Well, this is a pleasant change of pace. And uh, like I said, something that we might have been missing a little bit on the on the previous albums is were really relentless and really powerful and like you said, this is kind of expected from you. So it was a great, great track, one of my, my faves on the album. So Yeah, it's kind of like that, That uh, not that you're leaving while the song's playing, but it's almost like intermission time. Like, you know, all right, everybody gets up and goes and gets their popcorn and goes to pee uh, while they're listening to that song, you know? And, and I mean that in a good way. <laughs> you know, you know, Mike, um, so I know you saw that that review on Blabbermouth. Uh, it was by, you know, not blabbermouth, but a writer, you know, a, a review. Yeah. And I know you're pretty, uh, you know, honest about how you responded to that. I, I found it kind of shocking. I, I'll be honest with you. Like, it wasn't really a review about the album. And just to give everybody yeah. some context, okay, I'll just read a part of it, okay? Ultimately, yeah. you can try to kid people that worshipping sky fairies is a shrewd pastime, but it, it just isn't. And as much as Striper deserves applause for sticking to their guns, it's almost impossible to listen to Even the Devil Believes without wishing that Satan would arrive and lighten things up a bit. I mean, yeah. the guy was, and again, you know, I, I like Blabbermouth. Don't get me wrong. This is just a, a writer, one review, right? Um, sure. 
he he kind of forgot about the music and he's completely concentrating on this sort of that right wingers and god and that's it and and if you if you believe in that then you're then it, it means nothing to sell i mean what what's your response to this i i think it's incredibly unfair and i think in 2020 uh it's it it borders on being illegal it really does you know you see people out there on the streets fighting for their rights every day in new ways powerful ways you know and, and i'm not for rioting and 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 uh, vandalism at all everybody knows that but uh, my point is people are out there really fighting for their rights and yet this guy takes a dump on us because of our beliefs yeah yeah in no, 2020 and that's acceptable that's okay it's not okay and i read it and i just thought okay no no dude you're not going to wipe your boots on us you know you're obviously a hater of the band you're the last guy that should be reviewing a striper album yeah his name's I mean... dom Dom Lawson, you know, maybe he's Dom DeLuise's cousin or something. I have no idea. But, you know, it, I just read it and I just thought, wow, how unfair and how ridiculous. Uh, you know, it, it, they, they rarely review our albums anyway on Blabbermouth. And when they finally do, he gives us a four out of a ten, you know. Oh, wow. And the reason why, reason why it upsets me is because uh, not so much because of the low rating, but more so because it's a blatant attack on our faith. Well, the, the more I thought about it after I posted what I posted, you know, because I, I, at first I was like frustrated and I guess somewhat angry, I, I guess you could say. Uh, but then I thought about it and I thought, how sad, you know, this guy hates us so much. And, uh, you know, what's even funny, almost comical, is his review only fuels the fire. Yeah. In, a, in a good way. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you noticed all the comments of all the people that were against his review. I, I saw uh, some like, of them, yeah, and I see that. Almost almost 300 of them. I think probably the most comments they've ever gotten on any review <laughs> that they've put up. And all negative against his his words against us. And, and I'm just thinking, this guy must to some degree live somewhat of a, of a pathetic life because, you know, um, he for him to just write a review just to be nasty it, to me that's just not uh, that's not a good reviewer you know it's not I, I take i don't take anyone like that serious and i guess maybe i guess i'm being somewhat hypocritical because i commented on it and put it on my facebook page uh maybe i should not have commented on it and given them the time of day but regardless it doesn't matter it's not going to stop the army it's not going to stop the forces uh, Striper keeps doing what we do and have done so for almost 37 years. Dom Lawson isn't going to stop that. It's kind of yeah. like when those guys peed and bur tried to burn your records after back in the 80s or 90s. Do you remember that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you remember that story? <laughs> it's oh like, well, let's pee gosh. on them, yeah, then they'll really, try to light it, it on it fire. Just, <laughs> it just, all it does is make them look like fools. You, you know what's, you know, I got, I'm just going to say my last comment on this. I think people have this misconception that only right wingers are religious, and that's that's so so much further from the truth. There are a lot oh, of I left know. people. There are a lot of left leaning people, a lot, who are religious as well. And there's right people who aren't religious, and there's left that yep. aren't religious. Absolutely. But to say that only right wingers no, no are religious. About it. And it, it's funny because he talks about he briefly mentions uh, Satan in the in the article. I forget uh, in what context, but. Obviously, you look at his reviews, he's into the real dark stuff, and that's fine. Uh, not a problem with that. But uh, at the same time, we have a lot of Satanists and atheists who are fans of the band. I'm, when I say a lot, I mean a lot. We meet, we meet them worldwide and come face to face with them, do interviews with them, and huge fans who are uh, Satanist and atheist. Todd LaTorre. Todd Latore, you know, self-proclaimed atheist. Yeah, I mean, Todd's an track. atheist, and, and I mean, we I've interviewed with, you know, leaders of the Satanic Church, and they're like, man, oh, I love Soldiers, that's my favorite album of all time. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, okay, that's interesting, but that's amazing. That's all good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a... Uh...
it's, it just seems that, like I said before, the lines are drawn. There's black and white, and as we know, life is full of gray areas, and uh, that's maybe, where in the past. Maybe we snubbed, maybe we snubbed Dom in some uh, autograph signing line or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's it. Seems like there's something a little deeper uh, to uh, you know his. I, yeah, I, uh, I feel review. like there needs to be some sort of closure between you and Dom there. Yeah. <laughs> I think no, we need to get him no, online, really have it, a conversation. Honestly, no. No, there doesn't need to be any closure. I mean, Dom will figure out whatever his issues are, and I'm I'm good, man. But I I just I read it and I had to post it and say, wow, okay, this is fair. What do you guys think? So there you go. Okay, let's get back to the album here. What about How to Fly? I mean, it sounds like the Beatles meet Queen on that one. Uh, it's a great, <laughs> great, uh, great true. feel to it. Yeah, that's a mid tempo song that really focuses on the the vocals. You know the uh, the background vocals specifically. We are huge, and well, me, uh, I know we all are, but I'm probably even more so a big Beatles fan and and a, and a big Queen fan. And you know, Queen were Beatles fans as well, and uh, obviously, and you know, anything with those uh, really interesting chord changes and, and vocal uh, arrangements is really amazing. ELO, I love ELO. So that's a song that really takes you uh, down a different path as well and wanders away from the metal, but it's still a rockin' tune. And that's one of my favorites is in terms of just how it's written and how it's arranged as a song. You know, put metal aside. It's one of my favorites on the album. And then being a huge Judas Priest fan that you are, I mean, I can't, you know, Divider could have been on Angel of Retribution and, and the Middle Finger Messiah as well. It's got that kind of pre-chorus that's reminiscent of Sinner. I mean, you can just hear the, I just heard the influence from Judas Priest on, on those two songs. Yeah, absolutely. Divider has got a Priest feel, um, and, and that's one of my favorites on the album. Uh, I love the energy of that song and I love the riff that you know it starts out down oh down 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 oh down 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 it's really different it's like okay what is this where's this going and then when it goes down 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 you know the groovy part I just love how it feels it's I think it's going to be a staple in our set once we get out there and start playing again yeah like like many, uh, any, what are your what are your plans? Any timelines, or everybody's just waiting for their green light? Uh, everyone's waiting for their green light. I mean, you know, we want to be safe and uh, do it the right way. Uh, we had plans to do some shows this year, as everybody knows, uh, they're postponed. Some of them canceled, some of them postponed. Next year, we've got plans to go to Australia. I think in April and, you know, do some shows uh, throughout the year. But, it, it, you know, you're, you're reading stories about, uh, you know, the possibility of no shows in 2021, okay. you know, big shows. And it, now I'm wondering, okay, is that really going to happen? We'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It's a waiting game. But, yeah. man, I hope so. Uh, I really hope so that we can get out there and, and, and do what we do because this is not just our love, it's our livelihood. You know, I don't want to yeah, exactly. rain on anybody's parade, but, you know, flu season is coming and uh, coronavirus is a flu. And historic, historically speaking, the flu in North America, at least in the northern part portion of it, comes between November to February. And this year will not be any exception to what we get every year, right? Yep. Yeah, true. Very true. And, you know, I think it's all about just everybody knows now the importance of uh, going the extra mile to stay healthy. You know, disinfecting, yeah. mask, uh, distancing, all those things to really try to stay healthy. And obviously, even beyond that, getting in shape, yeah. you know, it's true. getting on a treadmill, eating healthy. Doing some push-ups, you know, it, it really keeping your body strong. So if you do get sick, you can fight it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hopefully that's the plan. Yeah, and spending quality time with the family too. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And, and I know too much quality time with the family uh, sometimes. <laughs> that, that's what. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been hearing. <laughs> to get out. Um, just so on again, a, a great. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, Alan. So, 
Well, I just I just want to get back to the album, Jim, because I mean it's officially launched today, and and the production job again, Michael, great job. The sound on this album is unbelievable. The drum sounds again. I I have to admit I struggled with the drum sounds on the early Striper albums, but ever ever since you take over the production helm, I mean it's 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 unbelievable the drum sound you're getting off of these albums now. Well, man, that means more to me probably than anything, and uh, the reason why is because you know I've been producing the albums for a while co-producing the old albums but produ really producing the new albums and when i hear people say you know the new production sucks or it's not as good as the past i just i shake my head and i think what what is going on here because what are you listening to i, I i'm not sure when i listen when i compare like this album to soldiers in the command it's night and day in, in the production yeah. And I mean, this album takes the win. You know, I go and listen in my car and compare the two, which I've done. It's like, oh my God, there's just no comparison. This is so much punchier and open and just fatter sounding. And uh, it. when I hear people say that, I just I gotta wonder, like, what's happening here? It, it, I guess they're just clinging so tightly to the past yeah. uh, that they again, don't want to let it go. I mean, you've done a great job. I, we, every every album that comes out, we say the same thing. You 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 are able to sound current, but without losing that classic striper sound. And that that's a fine line. There's not many bands that can do that, and you've done it consistently for the last you know four or five releases. So, it is it is a very fine line. And I mean, we did cross that line a couple times. Like obviously with the album Reborn, uh, that was much more modern feeling and sounding. And, you know, the production wasn't as great on that, but in all honesty, we didn't have the equipment and the budget and, and whatnot to do that the right way. But, you know, that was a solo album, in all fairness. That was originally a solo album that was being shopped as a solo album. I had a deal in place, and then it became a Striper album. We made a few changes, and it became a Striper album. So we can't really compare that album with the, uh, what you're referring to, but I mean, then you go to Murder by Pride, and that was still a little bit more on the light side, a little more modern. And then once you get to No More Hell to Pay, I think that's when we found our groove as Striper again. Yeah. yeah. So I, I know our time's coming up, but uh, just give us some insight on the Stro Striper documentary. I mean, where, what stage are you at on that? Oh, man. Well, you know, it's been tricky because the original guy we were working with uh, wasn't able to work with us any longer. So we started looking for a different company to help us get it done. And we only had just B-roll footage and stuff. We hadn't gotten a lot of footage. Uh, and then the pandemic kind of shut everything down. Wow. So we haven't been working on the documentary uh, for a while. Okay. But the plans are, at some point to get that done and make that the priority. We don't want to compromise the quality of it at all because we really want it to be special. You know, not just telling the history of the band and showing live footage and talking to the band. We want to really make it interesting and talk to fans and people whose lives have been changed because of the band. You know, from, from just everyday folks to celebrities. So we're going to really take the time to, to do it right and make it amazing and expect that to be coming. I would say for sure within the next uh, you know, two, three, four years at the very latest, we'll have a full-blown documentary done that will blow people's minds. Good. Yeah. So it's not like you have anything else to do. <laughs> no. <laughs> we got, i tell you what we, what we did during the pandemic uh, – we decided to, since we couldn't go out and play, we flew the guys out here and we quarantined for a few weeks and we went into the studio where we record and we recorded for on demand. People will be able to rent and or buy the live albums, uh, us playing like this new album in its entirety. We oh, played wow. it from start to finish. Oh, and okay. it's killer. So live it in the sounds studio. Live in the studio, it sounds killer. It's got like a live at Daryl's house kind of feel. Mm -hmm. We're all out in the studio together playing in the same room. And it's live, man. It's killer. And, and it looks out? so good. We had seven cameras. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, 
Uh, and and I tell you, man, that's going to come out probably within the next uh, six weeks. Oh, there you go. And then Great. we've got we did to hell with the devil at the same time. Oh, look at that! From from start to finish, the, every song. So again, uh, you're doing again just to recap. You done the whole new album, or is it just a set that you did of uh, like a striper set live? We the did studio? the whole new album, every single song. Wow! And then you did to hell with the devil. Hell with the devil, every okay. single song. And and then there's footage, B-roll footage of us talking about the songs and hanging out at the studio, and it's gonna it's gonna be killer. And so we did that to offer people the live experience of this new album. Mm. Cool. That's a new reality. A lot of bands are, are, are seeing the benefits of this, get, the, get their faces back out into the public because we can't do the live touring anymore. So, Totally. And the difference with this is most bands are doing like the live stream. So it's literally like on the fly, live. What we did with this is we, we went in and set up for a whole day. And, and when you listen to it, it sounds like you're listening to a record. Wow. So it's studio quality audio and video, uh, but it's live. But man, the quality is not compromised. Like some of these streams that you see, it, you just kind of, I, I forget which one I watched. I don't know if it was, uh, it was one of the Monsters of Rock live streams I watched. And uh, it, it just wasn't, the quality wasn't great, you know? Uh, yeah. and maybe they were just ironing out the bugs. I don't know. This will be really high quality. Nice. Good. All right, on that note... Yeah, on that note... September hey. 4th, which is today. I don't know when we're going to release this video, but let's just pretend today's <laughs> September 4th. And the new album, Even the Devil Believes. Mmm, quite contra controversial on that one. Even the Devil Believes. In God? In himself? I don't know, Alan. Janet well, Byer because you, you guys know why we titled it that, because <laughs> we believe in God, everyone knows that, and we also believe in the devil. We believe that the devil was created by God, he, he was Lucifer, and in heaven at one point in time, and tried to take over heaven and was kicked out of heaven and became Satan. So even the devil believes, the devil knows what's up. Yeah. yeah. And right. and that's what that's what we're trying to say with that statement, But but it also means... Even the devil believes, so don't say you believe, because that, that means nothing. Your words mean nothing. What means everything are your actions. Are you, are you living a life that represents God, that represents Christ? Are you, are you doing unto others as you would have them do unto you? you know? and, and that's what we mean by even the devil believes. But so what? That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. All right. On that note, everybody pick yeah. up the new album. All Michael, right. always a pleasure. It's been too long. We got to do this much more often. It's 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 always great talking to you and all this best success with this album and uh, Striper as a whole. So, well, guys, you you've always uh, waved the Striper flag and always been there. You know when others haven't. And I tell you, man, we we appreciate it so much more than you guys will probably ever know. And uh, thank you guys for always standing by us. Hey, thanks, Michael. We will talk soon. <laughs> hey, In thank 11 you, months. Michael. <laughs> okay, guys. God bless, man. Love you guys. And, and stay safe out there. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thanks very much. Same to you.